Hey, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be discussing the three biggest and most common mistakes I see novice lifters making, uh, which is keeping them from fulfilling their maximum potential in the gym. By novice lifter, I mean someone uh, who's maybe just getting started. Perhaps they've only been lifting for a couple months or maybe even just a couple weeks. Um, but it could also mean someone who's been lifting a long time, uh, perhaps several years, but is not really seeing any results. Uh, I'm sure you guys know people like this. There are many people that go to the gym for years and years and their body doesn't really change. They look the same in year three as they did in year one. So this video will definitely apply to these kinds of people. And also if you're just a beginner, you've been going to the gym for a couple months, but you haven't really been seeing the results that you wished you had, uh, or you're not really progressing that much, uh, this video is definitely for you. This is going to be no bullshit advice. Um, and if you incorporate the things I discuss in this video, I promise it's going to work for you uh, and it's going to catapult your gains to the next level. So if you're not seeing results, chances are most likely you're going to be doing one, two, or maybe all three of these things wrong. All right. So I'll leave some timestamps uh, down below so you can skip between them if you maybe already have some knowledge about uh, these things. And I'm not gonna go super in depth. Uh, this is just really starting a conversation, um, you know, maybe starting to get your brain working a little bit and uh, you know, do your own research at the end of the day. That's the best thing. Uh, but these three concepts are super important. So uh, step one, first concept is a uh, proximity to failure. So this is extremely important and this is perhaps uh, the biggest thing I see uh, holding people back in the gym. Uh, it's something that has affected me and it's something that affects pretty much every uh, beginner at some point uh, is just simply not training hard enough. So we know that in order to make the best gains possible, you have to be training relatively close to failure. And what that means is when you're doing a set of an exercise, you have to be going either all the way to failure or within maybe one, two, or perhaps three reps of failure. Um, and by failure, we mean failure with good form. So you're doing an exercise with good form and in order to do another rep, you'd have to, um, you know, really hurt your form and, you know, twist your body, use momentum, whatever, uh, that's failure already. So I'm talking about doing as many reps as you can with good and consistent form. Now you need to push yourself very close to your limit in order to progress uh, and make gains. And a lot of people, when they're going to the gym, they will train six reps away from failure, 10 reps away from failure, maybe even 20 reps away from failure. They won't even be breathing hard at the end of their set. Um, so I'll probably put some clips up uh, around me here somewhere, uh, just so you get an idea of what it actually looks like. Uh, to go to muscular failure. And if you're a beginner, the very first thing you need to do is first of all, focus on your technique. So each exercise you're doing, you need to have a good couple weeks of experience with the exercise, right? But once you feel like you have a decent handle on the exercise and you feel like you're doing it properly uh, and you have a good idea of how the movement works, then you really need to start pushing yourself and take it close to failure. You can't be leaving 10 reps in the tank. And a lot of people, they might think that they're close to failure, but in reality, the set is just getting hard. And when it gets hard, they just give up and they think they were very close to failure. But in order to truly gauge that, you need to simply take yourself to failure every once in a while, to true failure and just to be able to understand uh, where that limit is for yourself. So, you know, do this safely, don't hurt yourself, you know, maybe get a spotter if it's uh, that kind of exercise or use safeties or whatever, uh, you know, don't hurt yourself, that's always the most important thing, but really push yourself and push your limits and see where the failure is. So maybe you've been doing 10 reps on a certain exercise, but then you really try, you really try your absolute best to take it as far as your body will allow you. And guess what? You might get 18 reps and maybe you were training eight reps 
away from failure. And that's not good. That's going to be seriously holding you back. So train close to failure. Once you have um, more experience, then you'll know, oh, okay, I'm two reps away from failure here. I'm three reps away from failure. But when you're a beginner and you don't have months and years of experience with these exercises, you don't actually know how far away you are from failure. So you just need to fail sometimes safely, but you need to fail in order to really gauge uh, how close you're training to failure. So uh, that's number one, and that's possibly the most important one. So make sure uh, you're taking that seriously and uh, implementing training close to failure uh, in your workouts. So the next concept is uh, programming, right? So I have a entire video talking about why I think programming is very important. Um, which I'll link below if you want to watch that. Uh, that'll be a longer explanation than I'll give here, but just to touch on it briefly, um, programming is incredibly important in your training. If you're just showing up in the gym, even if you're training hard, but you're training without a program, you're just sort of hopping from one exercise to the next, uh, you're not doing exercises that sort of have synergy with one another, uh, you're just making it up as you go. You don't know how many reps you're doing. You don't know how many sets you're doing. Uh, that is just a recipe for disaster. And you're definitely not training uh, optimally. So you need to get yourself a program. And uh, ideally, over time, you want to uh, either modify a program that you're using in order to tailor it to your goals, uh, or you just want to come up with your very own program once you have uh, enough experience to do so. Uh, programming is extremely important uh, when it comes to training for bodybuilding. Uh, without it, you're really just, uh, you know, shooting in the dark. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, and it's really, really going to hold you back uh, to be training without a program. Uh, a lot of people think uh, that they can just show up in the gym and just do a workout and, uh, you know, whatever. But these people... Most likely, uh, they either don't have impressive physiques or if they do, uh, they're on steroids. And I can pretty much guarantee you that any uh, natural lifter with an impressive physique is going to have extensive knowledge about programming because it simply is that important uh, for a natural to build up their physique. So definitely, I can't uh, expand on this uh, in this video or even in one video. Uh, programming is an extremely, um, you know, extensive topic and uh, all I can recommend is that you go out there and you research for yourself and you learn about programming. The time you invest in programming, I promise you, is going to be worth it. You know, no, it can be hours, uh, hundreds of hours that you invest into programming and it's going to be worth it. It's going to, you know, pay you dividends in the end because it really is that important. So, Go out there, do that research. It's not wasted time. Uh, even if you spend an hour in the gym and then you go home, you spend an hour learning about programming, uh, you know, that hour you spent learning about programming in the long run might even get you more results than the hour you spent in the gym. So learn about it, uh, learn to program for yourself and uh, definitely, definitely don't work out without a program because even if the program is not the best uh, or not the most optimized for you, uh, any program, uh, that's actually structured and is somewhat directed towards your goals is going to be better than just showing up at the gym and winging it, right? So the final concept I would like to discuss, uh, number three, is going to be uh, progressive overload and also connected with that is uh, tracking and logging your workouts. So this kind of connects uh, together with the previous one about programming. Um, but you do have a lot of people who have a program that they use, but they don't uh, implement progressive overload and they don't track their workouts uh, day to day. So what you need to do is, uh, first of all, you need to be writing absolutely everything down. This is so incredibly important. Even if you're doing uh, the other two things that I discussed, you're training close to failure, and you have a program, if you're not writing everything down and you're not progressively overloading, which the two go hand in hand, you need to write things down in order to be able to progressively overload, you're still doing it wrong because it's gonna hold you back tremendously. So you need all three of these things to work together, right? 
and you need to write every single thing down, every set, every rep, and every single weight you use. And you know, if you do four exercises a day or six exercises a day and you go to the gym you know, five times a week or whatever, that's 30 exercises, 20 exercises, whatever you want, there is no way that you are remembering all of those sets, all of those reps, all of those weights, it's just impossible that you're going to be remembering that. Maybe you remember what you did last time, but do you remember what you did last month and the month before that? Absolutely no chance, right? So you need to be writing everything down. You can either use a book. Uh, that's what I use. I have a physical book in the gym with me uh, where I write everything down and it's really nicely formatted. Uh, so it's really easy for me to fill it out. But if you don't want to use a book, you can literally just carry pieces of paper around with you um, or you could just write it down um, in your phone. You know, you can download an app. There are plenty of apps that do this for you and they'll even, you know, give you all kinds of fancy looking charts and graphs and whatnot. Uh, or you can even just open a spreadsheet, uh, you know, on your phone. You can use Google Sheets or whatever. It's free. You can open a spreadsheet and, you know, just log your workouts like that. Whatever way you do it, you just need a way to write down every single thing you've done in every workout and to be able to look back at it and progressively overload. So that means either uh, increasing the weight slightly, uh, increasing the number of sets, uh, increasing the number of reps. Uh, there's also other forms of progressive overload. You can have longer time under tension. You can improve your form. But mainly uh, the one that we're talking about here is increasing uh, the weight or increasing the amount of reps. And in order to do that, you need to have written everything down. So you look at what you did last time. You know, let's say you did 30 kilos on an exercise and you did uh, three sets of 10. Okay, well, uh, if that was relatively easy for you or, uh, you know, let's say you were close to failure but not totally at uh, failure, then it's probably time to increase uh, some variable from that. So whether it's uh, doing more reps, maybe this time you're going to do 11 reps, even just on the first set, you do 11 reps and then 10 reps and 10 reps, that's already progressive overload. You've already uh, trained more than last time, you've done more weight, you've done more tonnage, and you're going to make gains from it. Uh, or maybe instead of doing 30 kilos, you're going to do uh, 32 and a half kilos or even 31 kilos. You know, it can be a tiny, tiny uh, increment, but you need to be uh, pushing the progression at the end of the day. And if you're not, you're just going to be holding yourself back tremendously. So you can have a fantastic program and you can be training hard. But at the end of the day, if you're just coming in the gym and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again uh, for a year, at some point, your body's just going to adapt to it and you're going to stagnate. So in order to keep progressing, you need to increase the weights, increase the reps. And the only way you can properly, efficiently do that uh, week after week on every single exercise that you do is to write everything down. There's no other way around it. And I promise you, anyone who takes this seriously, uh, they're writing things down. They don't just, uh, you know, work out based on how they feel. Uh, they don't work out without a program. They're working uh, close to failure. And um, that's basically it. These uh, three things are definitely going to get you results if you implement all three of them. And uh, take a good look at your training. And if you feel like you're not really getting results or you've been at the gym for a long time and not much is happening, well, think about the th three things I just discussed in this video and see how you can apply them to your training. Even if just one of them is missing, uh, that's enough to be holding you back. And if two of them are missing or God forbid, all three of them are missing. If all three of these are missing, uh, you're, I'm telling you, you're seriously wasting your time in the gym. So try to optimize all three of these things and enjoy the gains, my friends. So thank you for watching. I hope that helped and I will see you next time.